What's up you guys, I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap, and today we're going to do a review of the brand new 2023 Model Y Standard Range. Hey guys, so quick shout out to my buddy Mike. This is his new baby. Uh, he's called her Tessie. Uh, there actually isn't a standard range. You've pretty much got just, it's the Model Y all-wheel drive is kind of the, the new base. Then you've got the Model Y all-wheel drive. And then above that, you've got the Model 3 Performance. So today I'm just gonna do a review. We'll do uh, kind of the exterior impressions, the interior impressions, features, a little bit of a comparison because I have a 2017 Tesla Model S, uh, rear wheel drive though. And I'll be finally getting my car back, hopefully in a few weeks. I'll keep you posted on that one. Uh, but more information in the video here. So without further ado, let's take a look at this beautiful Model Y. So in terms of looks, I think really some of the side angles and the rear and the back are really its most flattering. Uh, it's a lot like a Model 3, as you can see. I have also done a Model 3 review. You can check the video uh, in the description. But essentially what they've done is they've taken that and they've raised it and they've also made it a hatchback as it very well should be. Here's the front. And, uh, you know, there are rumors of this Model 3 Highland refresh that's supposed to be coming out in some time. I think the rumor is that the Model Y refresh will be coming out a lot more in the future. But for now, you have this sort of Porsche-inspired front end. So I think you can see it's very sort of fish-like, extremely aerodynamic. But I do like the mean-looking headlights. Uh, they do look a little bit angry, and that's always a good thing for a car. Let's take a look at her from the side. So uh, I guess while we're on here, I'll point out the black color is not standard. That is an additional upgrade. I think it's about $1,000 or $1,500. Uh, the rims, as well as you can see here, have been upgraded. Uh, the classic ones come with those uh, aero wheel covers. And so this is an additional option as well that uh, my buddy went for. So he went all black down. He's got the black rims, the black paint, and also the black interior. But here you can see it really is kind of like a stretched up Model 3, just a little bit taller, but still looks pretty cool, I think, from the side. All right, now unfortunately, uh, just because we're a little bit close to the edge here, I can't uh, show you much more of the back. Uh, but you can see this is a hatchback. Nice big trunk opening, we'll open that for you in a minute. Does have a pretty subtle dual motor badge, just letting you know about that. And that's the exterior of the vehicle. So unlike a Model S and the Model X, which have the presenting door handles, the Model 3 and Model Y go for a different style. It's a little bit like a Corvette or something like that. Uh, basically, the idea is you're going to use your thumb and also your fingers to grab. So thumb goes here at the back, that pops out this part, and then you pull to open. First though, we've got to get the car unlocked. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the handy dandy Tesla key card. And you just pop that up here. There we go. All right, so now it's open again in here and pull. All right, guys, let's uh, take a look at the front. So I just popped that open using the um, <coughs> using the inside UI. I'll show you a little bit more of that later. Pops right up. Um, I think it's, you know, it's not power operated. It would be nice if they did that like Rivian does. And heck, they don't even do that in the Model S or Model X just yet, uh, but it's nice. You got this uh, good liner here to make sure it keeps all the weather out and another one over here for the frunk itself. Let me show you the, uh, the bed of it. So here's the frunk as you can see. Uh, it's pretty decent size. I think you could definitely fit a carry-on bag in there. Um, there's my hand for perspective. And you also have your handy dandy tow hitch down there. Now, as with all Teslas, there's not a whole lot going on in the front. You've got your windshield washer right over there, so you replace the fluid there. Uh, and that's about it. So very handy, uh, very nice to have all of this extra storage space that you wouldn't get in another vehicle. When you close the front, by the way, you don't want to push on the emblem that can damage it. You're going to just gently push on both sides of that and put that down. Let's go take a look at the rear. This might be a little bit tricky with the light. Let me see, uh, this way might be a little bit better, but might be difficult to see, but this is a huge trunk opening. So we have plenty, plenty of room. So yeah, guys, we have a cavernous uh, trunk opening, <laughs> as we can see here, plenty, plenty of room. Um, you can get the dimensions online, but uh, you can get an idea for that here. Um, I'm 5'8", by the way. 
And uh, so nice thing, of course, is that these seats are going to fold flat and then you'll have a tremendous amount of storage as well. You've also got storage here in the sides. Uh, looks like my buddy's got his charging over here. And then as with all Teslas, you've also got under, um, <laughs> under trunk storage. You've got additional storage in here. This goes down pretty deep. We're talking about all the way there. But uh, yeah, so plenty, plenty of room down there. And uh, by the way, your, your charging cables do come with a nice case that has a sticky bottom so it won't move around the trunk. So that is pretty cool. Um, there is also a parcel shelf that um, my buddy's taken down, but normally the parcel shelf sits right here. This has now become kind of the, the dog's zone, if you will. So uh, let me see, I can go ahead and pop down the, uh, the seats for you. And so this is something that's nice about the Model Y that uh, is not the case for my Model S, uh, is that it's really easy to drop down the seats because we have buttons right here. This is the left one, this is the right one. And so we can just pop that and then pop the other and boom, there we go. So now both seats are down and we have just huge, huge amounts of uh, space back here. And of course, if you're doing the camping thing, then you'd be able to see straight up at night, look at the stars and all of that good stuff. So pretty awesome. Uh, they do not come back up with power. You've got to do that manually, but not a big deal. So I think that about does it for the exterior. I think it's, um, you know, nice and understated, very Tesla, still very modern and very cool looking. And I look forward to seeing what kind of updates they do, but still very, very nice as it is right now. Oh, of course, it is a power uh, lift gate, so you've got a button right here. It is illuminated at night. And there we go. All right, guys, let's jump in and take a look at the interior of the 2023 Model Y. Okay, stepping into the Model Y, I uh, just want to show you the door cells do say Model Y on them. That's pretty cool. And uh, here you got your seat controls. So they're very um, many way adjustable seats. They're very comfortable, I would say. These are a vegan leather, uh, other words vinyl, but uh, also very uh, comfortable, very soft. Really does feel a lot like leather. It's a nice material. Okay, before we go in, just give you an idea of what the doors look like here. You do have some courtesy lights down below that will illuminate uh, where you're stepping at nighttime. And there's also ambient lighting as well. All right, guys, so first things, um, we have nice soft touch plastics here on the door sill, so very comfortable to rest your arm. You got kind of this classy wood grain here. Um, it does feel like it's open pore, so that's actually really nice. Aluminum trim below it. And then this line, the style line, goes all the way across to the other side, and uh, I think it looks pretty darn sweet. You probably also notice just how open the dash is. You got incredible visibility above the steering wheel because you don't have the center console as you do in most vehicles. Coming back to the doors, you've got four-way automatic uh, up-down um, mirrors. We got, again, this uh, leatherette kind of vinyl uh, material here, very soft. We have a black Alcantara suede uh, behind. So all of these very nice materials everywhere that you're gonna touch. You have here electronic door release. There's a little button here. Um, it does have a nice uh, illuminated um, button, <laughs> basically, that will let you know what it is. Um, in case of an emergency, though, you can still pull here uh, for a, a mechanical door release as well. But because when you open the Model uh, Y or Model 3 doors, or any Tesla for the matter, because they are rimless, what happens is the glass first comes down a little bit, and then you're able to open the door, and that keeps it from damaging the door trim. So I'll demonstrate that right here. So there, you, it was kind of imperceptible, but it happened. And then when you close, then that mirror comes back up. There it is. So that's something that would not happen with a mechanical release, and it can, over time, uh, put some wear and tear on the door trim, so not something you want to be doing. You got very massive door pockets down here. Let's see, what have I got? I got this uh, big thing of um, gum. <laughs> So that'll give you an idea of how much storage space is in there. And it is quite ample, I think. A uh, really nice touch about it is that it is lined entirely with felt, both at the bottom and on the back. And uh, then this material here is uh, relatively pli compliant plastic. So that's um, also a nice thing. So things are not going to rattle around there and make a lot of noise. And that's an important thing with an electric car because they are just so darn quiet. So moving on. 
I'm not sure if you can really see, yeah you can, you can see the pedals down here and the carpet, very comfortable. So of course only two pedals, the brake pedal, which you don't need to use very much because of regenerative braking, and the fun pedal, which is a heck of a lot of fun in these cars. Here you got your steering wheel and you have these scroll wheels which also serve as buttons if you push them down. You can also push them left and right for different functions and of course scrolling up and down. By default they're going to do your volume and then also your, um, your cruise control follow distance and whatnot. But depending on the menu that you're at on the screen here then they will do different things. So it's a little bit hard to see because it's blacked out and we've got a lot of sun. But there you have it. This is the Model uh, Y and 3 interface using this 15 inch landscape screen which is really awesome. Here we have it as you can see information about the car uh, almost zero miles came with autopilot that's standard has the full self-driving computer all new cars of course have the full self-driving computer but you need to pay in order to get the actual full self-driving. We can see additional vehicle information here and here you can see that this comes with the premium audio. So if you're Model 3 buyer your short range Model 3s do not have premium audio but any Model Y has the premium audio, which is, I think, a 12 or a 15 speaker system, um, at least 12, and it's really, really very good. Um, on top of that, these newer cars have, as you can see here, an AMD Ryzen infotainment processor. And so that's much faster than the Intel Atom processor on my older car. And as a result, all of these UI interactions are extremely snappy. So there are a lot of features in here. Um, if you've checked out my old Model S uh, <laughs> review, I go over a lot of them, although that was some time ago, and of course things have changed to some degree. Uh, but uh, I guess a rundown of some of the really cool stuff that we can talk about here. It's a Tesla, so you know, you've got of course the ability to stream all kinds of uh, um, different <laughs> things like YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. You've also got your owner's manual available there. And moving over to the arcade here, you can see we have a number of different games that you can play. You can hook up a USB game controller. Um, I use one from Logitech and you're able to play all these games in comfort. And a toy box, we got some kind of random stuff, romance mode, tracks to make music, emissions testing mode, so you can make the car fart whenever you turn the signal um, or when you hit it. Boombox light show, which is pretty cool. This is a feature that I don't have on my car because it's a lot older. And with these cars, you can even, I think probably part of the boombox settings, is you can replace the horn sound with any MP3 that you want. And so you'd be able to, you know, I don't know, make the car fart when you hit the horn or play any kind of random things. You can also use the megaphone when you're parked in order to yell at people. So <laughs> pretty fun stuff. Uh, they definitely have a great sense of humor over at Tesla. This bottom bar is customizable, so you can click and hold, drag things around. There is a limit to how much stuff you can have down there, and I'm not going to mess with Mike's profile, but there you have it. I guess the most important thing to let you know about here, though, is that little arrow right there. Um, hopefully it's visible on screen, but there's a down uh, red, uh, yellow arrow, and what that means is that there is an update available to download. And were we to download that, then the car would all of a sudden have some improvements and potentially new features. This can happen over time. And that's one of the most amazing things about owning a Tesla, is that the day you buy it is not the day that it performs at its best. Over time, it will continue to get better and better as the software improves. So, um, you've seen this uh, in my Model 3 review. This had it as well, but it's pretty cool how you can just move this and that changes where the air is flowing. Uh, you can see that because it hasn't detected a passenger in the passenger seat, that therefore we also don't have um, any kind of airflow going on here for the passenger. And the same is true for the rear. Uh, another nice thing about the Model Y compared to the Model 3 is this icon right here that's bioweapon defense mode. So it's a smaller HEPA filter than you see in the Model X and Model S, but still a very good filter that will help to filter out particulates uh, like when we had those wildfires in Canada. This would have been useful for people that were in New York. So swiping anywhere from the bottom will open this climate control menu. You can also get it, of course, by hitting here. And if you toggle those, then you get kind of this little one over there. All right, but um, other cool things, well, you've got heated steering wheel, don't have that on my car. You've got he heated windshield wipers, also very good. Don't have that on my car because I didn't get the cold weather package. You've got climate control keep, that's good for when you've got passengers. Oops, uh, I turned that one on, didn't mean to. You've got dog mode as well for when your um, you know, canine friend needs to be kept in comfort while you're at the grocery store. You've got camping mode as well. 
and let's see what else is there you got your heated seats over here and of course you can also control uh, the heated seats in the rear uh, by hitting this button here on the left and then you've got heated seats as you can see in the back and cool thing about the model y is you have heated uh, middle seats as well this isn't common a lot of times you only have heat in the um, uh, the seats on the two sides so pretty pretty cool you also have a handy dandy all off button to make sure that uh, you're not heating seats when they don't need to be heated all right, moving on from there, we have down here two wireless charging pads. Uh, I think there's a way to set up plugs, but I'm not sure. But they are also lined with Alcantara suede, which is uh, very soft. Um, it's a little bit tricky. It barely fits my Note 20 Ultra. I think it doesn't quite fit my buddy Mike's phone with the case, or even without the case, actually. But for those of you with iPhones or smaller phones, you're not going to have any trouble. But if you've got a huge phone, a big boy, you may have some trouble fitting it in there. And you'll have to use uh, other methods for charging, of which we have many. Cavernous storage down here, lined with felt. Uh, there's a weird kind of bump in the back there. I'm not really sure that's just something to do with the, the design. Uh, but anyway, as you can see here, you also do have USB-C ports, two of them. You have great cub holders. Um, I'm sure this liner is removable, maybe? Uh, I don't know, maybe not. But anyway, uh, nicely lined and comfortable center console as you can see here opens up plenty of storage down there as well also lined with felt uh, I, it is not adjustable so that's something that you lose here with this one but still pretty good and a little more view of the seats here they're very very comfortable so ambient lighting package does include footwell lighting and also lighting inside all of those door pockets i think my buddy turned it off let's take a quick look here on two lights uh, no, they're on. It's just way too bright right now for you to see that. So that's what's going on there. All right. Uh, we do have, of course, the vanities here. Um, they pop down and it's kind of interesting. You kind of have this um, like two stage deal where you can, I don't know why it's, um, why it's like that with this flap. But anyway, uh, and uh, they are illuminated from behind, uh, from behind the mirror itself. So that's kind of neat. And you got that for the passenger as well. Uh, let's see. Over here, we've got our, um, our cautions are right there. If you're wondering where they are in a three or why, you got additional, I think those are microphones actually. And then of course, re, you know, map lights as well here, just uh, with the touch activation, which is pretty cool. Here is the um, camera, the interior camera. So that is checking you out and uh, will help in case you are um, using autopilot and then it will nag you less because it knows that you're paying attention to the road. We got tweeters here. We got tweeters here. Of course, there's um, a larger uh, speaker in the door panel itself, both both sides. Uh, and then we have more doors in the rear and even uh, in the trunk. Um, on the back of the trunk deck, you've got two speakers additionally as well. And there is a dedicated subwoofer in the car. So really, really nice. So I think that about does it. Yes, I think that about does it here for the front of the car. Let's pop into the back seat and go over that. Okay, stepping in here to the back seat of the 2023 Model Y. Very nice. So we can see here that all the materials carry over from the front. You've got the soft touch plastics up top. You've got the suede here on the door pocket. And then, I'm um, sorry, in, in the door pocket storage here, you've got lined with felt, but you've even got these little rubber um, inserts that go at the bottom. And so this is great if you've got kids, <laughs> might make a mess. You can take those out, clean them up. Very, very cool. Uh, we do have map pockets in the seat. We do have also the vents with two USB-C ports. And one of the great things about the Model Y, these seats have been basically put on a platform to give you the CUV type of ride height. Um, that along with the expanded, you know, increased roof height is, uh, is a really nice thing about the Model Y. But, what I was saying is, because it's nice and tall, you can just stick your feet down there, and it's very, very comfortable. Uh, if you're a taller adult, you'll be very happy for that. And even at my height of 5'8", it is quite nice. We've got another speaker right here in the door, and uh, yeah, you can see that on that side. One thing that's new about, well, the Model 3 and um, the newer cars compared to mine, is that you do have small conveniences like a coat hook, and it's soft open, soft close, and you've also got this little light here as well. So, uh, oh, it's not turning on because I don't have the car on. All right. Yep, so here you can see kind of what it looks like um, with the seats in and the trunk. And of course, one of the amazing things about Tesla's is this very expansive uh, <laughs> glass roof that spans the entire way through to the rear. 
So very, very cool. Very, very cool. Hopefully I didn't uh, make you guys nauseous doing that. Um, you do, of course, have some adjustability on the height for the seat belts here. Um, the headliner is uh, a cloth fabric, but it's nice and soft and, and kind of airy, and I think it goes along with, uh, with the, the design aesthetic here for the Model Y. Uh, let's see, you've got, of course, your child safety latches and all that stuff. Oh, before I forget, uh, it's a little bit tricky to pull it open, but you can pop this down and you have two additional cup holders here, and it can also serve as a handy armrest. All right, guys, so I think that's about it for my interior impressions of the Model Y. I'm getting cooked a little bit here. The uh, <laughs> It's about 100 degrees here in Texas. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really great interior. Um, it's extremely elegant and uh, clean and just minimalist, but... Uh, but it makes you feel very calm and peaceful while you're in here. The other thing I would add is that general build quality is highly improved. This car was built in te uh, here in Texas, in Austin, actually. Let me get back in the front where I can get some AC, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about the vehicle. Uh, before I forget, this, of course, does close, and it's just a soft touch, just kind of slide it over, and there it holds, and uh, everything feels sturdy, sturdy and well-built. All right, guys, so let me tell you a little bit more about this car. Um, so first of all, pricing, you're probably wondering about that. And uh, so right now, as of this filming in um, early July of 2023, uh, this car starts at around $47,000 uh, with the tax credit actually be, comes in at just over $40,000. I think it's $40,240, which is an incredible uh, steal, I would say, because uh, there are a whole lot of cars out there, you know, for 40K that are a lot less car than this is. So if you're able to cash flow that and get the tax credit, um, it's pretty pretty awesome deal, hard to pass up. And that's exactly why my buddy got it. He'd been looking at some used RDXs or um, RX350s or maybe even like a Q3, Q5, that kind of thing. And this was just a, a way, way, way better deal. Also going to have of course cheaper running costs over the long run as well both due to gas and also due to a lack of maintenance as EVs have much simpler drive trains. Uh, other things to talk about well again all Model Ys are dual motor so they are quite peppy this does 0 60 in 5 seconds uh, they may be sandbagging that feature a little bit because they say that the long range does it in 4.8 seconds and then of course we have the performance models that go even faster than that. Uh, horsepower is hard to pin down the exact figure I'm seeing 300 some places on 3 340 other places given that the car weighs 4,400 pounds the 340 sounds more reasonable um, 69 and 420 numbers come up all the time with Elon Musk this car has 420 uh, nanometers of torque apparently <laughs> so there you have it um, so yeah quite speedy a lot of get up and go with all-wheel drive off the line you're going to be very happy with the performance absolutely you can put on chill mode if you don't want to be you know kind of like the, the red light racer um, but hey the fun pedal is always fun to hit uh, range on this puppy is 280 miles, 279 actually, and so I suspect that this has the new 4680 form factor batteries coming out of Austin, Texas. So I think that's the deal, don't quote me on it, I'm not 100% sure, but I, leave, I believe that that's the case. 280 miles is plenty of range, you can get you know, 330 with a long range, but 280 I think is, is more than enough for, for most purposes. It's able to charge up to 240 kilowatts I believe, and so very rapid charging when you're doing road trips on the supercharger. Another one of the amazing features with the Tesla is that supercharge availability and how it all integrates with your nav system. So you can see that in my road trip video. I did 1,800 miles from New Hampshire all the way down here and man yeah the system was just flawless. Uh, what else can I tell you about this car? Tons of storage, 76 cubic feet, so <laughs> not a problem there. Great car, I think, for, for a family, and you know, unless you're all like eight feet tall, but even then, I don't know, plenty of room, I think. So yeah, I think you're going to do well, um, you know, regardless of your height, and then also putting child seats there in the back as well. So yeah, there you go. That, that's the price. Those are the specs. You've seen the exterior. You've seen the interior. Altogether, I give the Model Y in 2023 two thumbs up and really happy to see the major improvements in build quality uh, that they've done over the years. This thing just feels really well buttoned up all over the interior. All right, so next we're going to do uh, some driving impressions. I'm going to interview my, my buddy Mike as we drive along. And then uh, if I have any other final thoughts, I'll, I'll wrap it up at that point. But I think it'll just be a fun way to end the video. Uh, you can see my buddy Mike uh, talking about his, his experience here driving the car. Um, so if you do hit like the video, by the way, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing. And, uh, you know, thanks in advance, guys. I'll see you in the next video. But yeah, on to the driving impressions. YouTube, meet Mike. <laughs>
Mike's been kind enough to lend us his Model Y for today. And so I think he's a great person to talk to about what it's like to drive the Model Y. So he's coming from a Honda Accord, and a lot of people that are moving into the Model 3 and Model Y, you, you might be surprised they're jumping over from things like a Toyota Prius, a Camry, and an Accord as well, being all very sensible people like we are, um, but getting into a car that's a hell of a lot more fun than those. So, Mike, what's it like? Yeah, well, I think I was shocked. Um, I wish I had gotten one sooner, honestly. That was my first reaction was I wish I got this sooner. And the main reason is just it's so fun to drive. <laughs> um, you know, there's I'm a tech, tech guy, so I love the electronics of it, but simply driving it alone is incredible. I mean, I've ridden in like your Tesla and it's, it's super fun as a passenger, but to drive it, like I, I look forward to driving it. I'm, you know, at night I like miss driving it. If I'm in my apartment, I like miss it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. What's your favorite part about it? That's a hard one. I'd, I'd say either the just instantaneous torque or the autopilot. Yeah. Those two things are amazing. So how does the um, driving dynamics compare to your Honda, like around corners and that kind of thing? How do you feel? Well, if I don't have autopilot on, <laughs> it's it's really comfortable and tight. And um, I, I even though I went from sedan to SUV, I feel like I it has a lot more just agility. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just feel like it's, I have great control with it. So. That's awesome. So you don't feel like it's top heavy at all? No, 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 no. Okay, great. Um, and then how about the suspension? How does that compare? <laughs> well, the shocks on my Accord weren't the best towards the end, um, so it's insanely comfortable. Um, you know, I, I intentionally avoid potholes and stuff right now just because it's so new um, and just the low profile wheels, but uh, even when I do accidentally hit some, it still is very comfortable. Cool. Any cons at all? I think the only con I can really think of is that it's at first very overwhelming, um, just everything going on and adjusting to um, the center screen instead of a dashboard and all the, the tech gimmicks on the screen. And um, so at first it's just overwhelming at first, but I've, you know, after two weeks now I've gotten used to everything and, um, you know, going from a simple... <laughs> automatic gas car with like not a lot of gimmicks to this is can be overwhelming so i think that's something that takes a little bit of learning curve and adjustment and, and also the getting used to the no brake pad just using the accelerator accelerator can be an uh, adjustment period but other than that i don't have any cons at first i thought the the charging situation would be like overwhelming and that's honestly why i didn't get it sooner but um now that I've seen it in action and gone to superchargers and used the, the maps with the charger locations, it's so freaking easy. Like I don't I don't understand why I didn't do it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well news always a little bit scary. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so overall would you recommend it for other people? Oh my god, yeah, get it this year before the credit's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was looking at a RDX, you know put me over the pro price of this brand new, so it was a no-brainer right now. Um, so yeah, I absolutely recommend it. Awesome, thanks Mike. Yeah, thank you.